Today, I'm reviewing Joker, the Rocky Mountain Construction Hybrid Coaster at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom in Vallejo, California. Joker was an RMC conversion of the park's former GCI, Roar. And while I liked Roar, Joker is definitely an upgrade. It gives the park a signature coaster and an airtime machine. For those unfamiliar with the history of Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, the park used to be exclusively a nature park called Marine World. When Six Flags purchased the park, they relocated the parking lot across the nearby pond and started adding coasters to the original parking lot. Roar was one of those coasters as it was built right next to the main entrance. So when it was converted into Joker, you still get an amazing view of the ride's first drop. I also just love the overall appearance of Joker. The ride looks great with its dense wooden structure and the mixture of purple and green rails. It's a really distinctive appearance. I also love the Zero Car in Joker. The Clown Prince of Crime looks fantastic. But the good looks don't stop there. The station itself is themed to a funhouse. Guests enter through a giant clown mouth and the building is complete with funhouse mirrors and a giant set of moving false teeth. It's certainly not Disney level of theming, but it's a step up from the usual Six Flags cardboard cutout theming. Joker seems to be one of the more unreliable RMCs. In both my visits, Joker has had a delayed opening and multiple breakdowns. It also has a tendency to run one train, a finding corroborated in not just my visits, but the visits of others as well. Hence the really fancy one train op sign out front. If it wasn't an issue, it wouldn't have a custom sign like that. RMCs already aren't the best coasters for throughput because of the heavy restraints and seatbelt checks, but being reduced to one train ops makes this queue move at a glacial pace. With regards to seat selection, Joker is unequivocally a back row ride for me. The airtime is considerably stronger back there. The park does have a tendency to assign seats due to the small station, but they have honored my requests on both visits. Moving on to the coaster, Joker leaves the station at a suspiciously fast rate. While it isn't a launch, it definitely has more kick than your regular dispatch. A lot of RMC prelifts come close to giving airtime, but they do fall a bit short. Instead, they just throw you around. But on Joker, this added speed allows you to get some bona fide airtime. There are at least two pops. After ascending the 100 foot tall lift, you descend down one of my favorite drops on any coaster. Joker has a 78 degree twisting first drop. It's exceedingly rare to have a twisted first drop that steep, and it's downright wild. It delivers powerful ejector airtime like you'd expect from an RMC, but it also mixes in some crazy laterals. That's followed by the ride's first inversion, the step up underflip. Think of this as a zero G roll with a curving drop on the other side. I'm glad RMC went with this exciting element instead of a traditional turnaround, but more on that later. You then fly through Joker's zero G stall, and this may be my favorite inversion on any coaster. The hang time is quite powerful. It feels like upside down ejector airtime, and it's sustained for a good two to three seconds. Meanwhile, you also have some wicked head choppers with the element's support structure. This element is absolutely perfect. Up next is the breaking wave turn, which is an off-axis hill followed by a wave turn. The off-axis hill has some strong ejector airtime throughout the train. The wave turn only gives a little pop of airtime, but it's definitely disorienting because of the rapid change in direction that has just occurred. You then haul over back-to-back -back bunny hills. If you're in the back, you get some seriously strong ejector airtime. The airtime towards the front is still pretty strong, but it's not quite as powerful. The increased airtime strength and incredible first drop are why I strongly recommend the back row. You then coast around a lackluster turnaround. This is the first of three turnarounds in Joker that serve no purpose other than to bridge you from one element to the next. It's a rare moment on an RMC where you can catch your breath. But no worries since you're back to the action with the Asian Camelback, which is a Camelback with a small dip in between the ascent and descent. So think of it as three-fourths of a double up and three-fourths of a double down spliced together. The little dip in between gives a quick pop of airtime in the back, but the second drop tries to throw you back into the stratosphere. And like the two preceding bunny hills, you get some good airtime up front, it just isn't as strong as the back. That's followed by the second lackluster turnaround before Joker whips through the final inversion, a hang time filled zero G roll. Except this zero G roll winds in the opposite direction you'd expect based on the banking you exit the previous turnaround, so it definitely throws you off. 
You then roll through the final turnaround, which again is a rare dull spot in the ride, before charging through the final bunny hill. This hill gives some powerful ejector airtime throughout the train. You then snap onto the brake run, giving a final dose of airtime before coming to a stop. So what do I rank Joker? I'd give it a 9 out of 10. I know many people call this the worst RMC, but I really like Joker. It's not the worst one to me. This coaster may have the best inversions of any RMC, and the airtime moments are extremely powerful in the back row. The only downsides with this ride are the putrid operations and those lackluster turnarounds I mentioned that are peppered throughout the ride. Have you ridden Joker? Do you agree it isn't the worst RMC? I'd love to hear your thoughts about this hybrid below. Subscribe for more coaster reviews and thanks for listening.